Welcome everyone. This is uh, Jenkins Platform SIG meeting, September 12, 2023. And today we have Mark Waite and Kenneth Saleno. Thanks a lot for coming, folks. In the agenda today, we have a few open action items. In fact, one, as always. Uh, we have a few things to say about the ongoing work. What is going on, of course, with GDK21, that's the subject uh, nowadays. Uh, we'll see pretty fast what has been done lately on the agent and controller images. And then if you have something to add, we would have new topics. Uh, Mark, uh, Kenneth, would you have anything to add to the agenda before I forget? No, not for today, thanks. No topics for me. Okay, that should be a quick meeting. <laughs> So, as always, Docker images, once again, container image depreciation for the Blue Ocean container, which does not mean official Jenkins controller image on which, on top of which you installed um, Blue Ocean. It's just a separate container, which has been deprecated for a long time, and we still have to announce it officially to the users. But, frankly, they should know about that. Uh, it's been a while. It hasn't been updated, and it's pretty uh scary you know to run such an old container anyhow uh as for the ongoing work i don't have so before before yeah. you leave that one before you depart from oh, that sorry. one there was a recent change from from tim jacom uh mentioning that now the readmes at least for some container images are automatically populated into docker hub and we may be able to leverage that to make an improvement here the, the big thing is we got to get the message out that on the on the site and et cetera. So Tim's Tim's change, I think, was in one of the agent images, but um, it may help us here as well. OK, so some of the readme files are now being synced. Yeah. With Docker Hub, right. Thanks for letting me know. Uh, I saw that discussion earlier this week, but I didn't think of putting it in there. Thanks for noticing that. Uh, now, uh, if we had had um, Stefan or Damien today, we, they would have had tons of things to say about the um, GDK21 on the infra. So I just say some of the things I know about that because I participated a little bit on that. Um, so, Tethering um, supplies early access versions of their GDK21 for lots of platforms. Uh, uh, AMD64, of course, ARM64, uh, even RISC-V64, um, and maybe PPC LE64. I haven't checked, uh, Kenneth, but there are lots of them. They are nightly built, so almost every other day you have something new to chew on. Um, but sometimes your platform is not there. Sometimes it's there, it just depends, you know, it's just a nightly build. But sometimes they also supply a more stable version with the called EA beta, so early access beta. And that's the one that has been installed on the Jenkins infra. So it was in lots of different places like Packer. Uh, I've seen something in Vagrant, uh, just about everywhere. So we have installed the latest EA version that was delivered, I think, the second week of August. We haven't seen any other ones since then. And it's almost ready for the official version that should happen next week, seven days from now. Yes, I'm super excited about that. We'll see. Uh, there should be a few EA iPhone beta to remove here and there in the Jenkins infra, but more or less, it should be okay. We also have uh, used update CLI to keep it updated. So, of course, the uh, Tamarin hasn't supplied yet another version of EA, and I highly doubt this will happen. I don't think we will see that before the official version. So, that's some a preliminary work in order to have the definitive version of GDK21. Not definitive, because there will be some, of course, uh, other versions, uh, mine, you know, plus something, plus one, plus two, and so on. But anyhow, the official version. So it's 
working as far as I know. We haven't broken anything. Uh, or would you have any other information that I don't have more? No, as no. far as we're getting more and more things that support Java 21 in their tests, we found no Java 21 related bugs that would affect production at all. All the changes made so far have all been related to test. So that's that's really impressive as how well they've done in the transition from 17 to 21. Oh, yes. That's really encouraging. Uh, by the way, Mark, as we're talking about JDK 21 and 17, uh, would you like to give us a summary about what you're working on, what has been proposed to the community, and if there is anything... Um, it's not finished, I know, uh, for the time being, but if there are any progress on that side? Sure. Yeah. So I sent last Friday, I sent a summary um, to the Jenkins board and Jenkins officers. So the infrastructure officer, the release officer, the events officer, and the security officer proposing that proposing what's in the Google Doc. And if you open the Google Doc, we can we can actually read the text that I sent to them. So it's it's a long description about a transition from where we are right now to a two plus two plus two support model for Java. Java releases go out every six years uh, or Java Java releases go out every two years and they are supported for six years. All right. So a two year every two year release. So 2023, there's a release. The next one will be in 2025. Um, 17 released two years ago in 2021. And each of those releases is supported for six years. But the Jenkins project and the Jenkins maintainers don't want the overhead of carrying three Java versions at any one time in their code mm. base. So the proposal here was to go to two plus two plus two model. First two years of the new Java release, we support it without requiring it. Uh, the, the required Java will be the one previous so in this picture, Java 21 today is not supported, will be supported for a period while Java 11 and Java 17 are supported. Eventually, we'll get to the point where we'll only have two at a time. So one, the prede predecessor version is, is required. The mm -hmm. current version is supported for two years. After those two years of initial, then the the current the the latest version becomes the mandatory version because that's when we start supporting the next major version of Java, the next LTS. So it's a two plus two, and that means we will drop support for the the oldest Java version in the last two years of its life. Yep. Does that so, does that explanation make sense, Bruno? Kenneth? Even to me, uh, <laughs> I understood, which is a good sign, I think. Kenneth, I'm sure you understood everything. Yeah, yeah. So I and I have to say the the testing I've done in the past three months have only been with Java 17. I kind of, you know, I, I knew this was coming and I kind of gave up on Java 11 personally. When I, mm -hmm. you know, because it everything worked just fine and I and each new build I wanted to be sure 17 was good. But it's um it's good to hear from you that everything that was working in 17 you think has been working in 21. So. I don't anticipate I'm going to be catching anything myself. Right. Well, and and there's an important milestone for people who are using Java 11 right now. That milestone is the October 2024 end of life, mm -hmm. right? And and that's that's a different thing. Java 8 still hasn't reached end of life, and it won't have reached end of life by Sept by October 2024. It's got a longer life than Java 11, but Java 11 will get no more security fixes in the public releases of it after that end of life. So users want to get off Java 11 and onto Java 17 promptly. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, the plan should be made now. All right. Thanks a lot, Mark. Um, by the way, Kenneth, have you tried JDK 21 yet by yourself or Jenkins of other projects? No. No, no. So the way that my uh, automation works when I do my builds. Um, I build based on the um, the weekly that I want to test, yeah. and and the hash for that. And then I don't tweak anything else to be specific. And and whatever tags are there from that build, which I've only seen eleven and seventeen, the last build I did. So it it should should twenty one start appearing when I do my build now. Uh, I'm afraid if you're stuck with PPC sixty four LE. 
not yet. Uh, we'll see later on in the document that um, we have supplied um, agents, agent images for JDK21. They are tagged with JDK21 hyphen preview, but it's only for AMD64 and uh, ARM64, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, I was so, very sorry. prudent. So yeah. So theoretically, I could I could hack the build to to make it build for PPC sixty four LE then. Oh, if ever you want to um, have a PR for PPC sixty four LE, please do so. I would be delighted to see that. Sure. Yeah. Well, I wasn't brave enough to do it. Sorry, Mark. Go ahead. I think I think it's reasonable to expect that uh, Adoptium, the Eclipse Temerin, will support PPC sixty four E sixty four LE in Java twenty one because they support it with Java twenty, and and oh, given yeah. that. Now, I don't think right now that they're delivering any pre-release builds that are based on PPC64, but you could check. We we haven't checked because we don't have any physical PPC64 LE hardware in the Jenkins infrastructure. Uh, if you don't mind, let me quickly check. Great. Okay, release it. So, JDK, why not? This one is the last one. And yeah. They do yeah, exist. they've got it. Good. Okay, so yeah. all you need to do is download it. Yep. Yoo-hoo. But the thing is, there is no guarantee whatsoever if they will continue delivering uh, for PPC64, LE4, ARM64, whatever. We don't know. These are only nightly build releases. So we put preview because it's not finished. And we're even not sure. You know, there was a disclaimer, I think, in the latest image we published saying, uh, you know, it's existing for the time being, but we can't promise it will still be there one week from now. But yes, that's cool. Uh, go ahead. If you have time, uh, Kenneth, fire up your PR. I'll be glad to see that. Um, I was about to say something. I forgot. Whatever. We'll see. I hope it will still be there when the official one will be delivered. We'll see. Uh, thanks a lot for this long summary, uh, Mark. That was just about perfect. Now, what has been done lately, so the last two weeks, uh, we have seen a few a new release for the SSH agent. We have seen a minor JDK version burn. So we are now on 17.08.11 and 11.0.20.11 for the 11 and 17. They have been, as I just said, uh, the first JDK 21 preview images. The thing is, it's only for ARM64 and AMD64. My fault. Yeah. Um, then for the Docker agent, uh, we had a few version bumps too, and we also had a breaking change, and we had three releases. So the breaking change is on the Windows images. I still don't have the numbers. Um, I'm sure there was at least one user of this Windows image. No, no, I'm just kidding. I don't know, maybe thousands of users are using that. But for the time being, nobody has complained that we had some, they had some problem with that. We had a few users uh, not being happy with the um, Debian bookworm update, but for the Windows one, no news for the time being. Uh, and okay, that that unhappiness in terms of changing from bullseye to bookworm was going to happen eventually anyway. Bullseye, yeah, bullseye course. will not live forever. So I, I don't feel much shame in the fact that yes, we do occasionally upgrade our operating systems. I don't feel any shame. I'm pretty proud that we were not uh, late. You know, we were not the last, the last uh, car in the train. Uh, I'm pretty happy when we, you know, we managed to have uh, our operating, super operating systems, most or, more or less uh, up to date. And when I say unhappy, it's because there have been some side effects. Uh, I can't remember them all, but for example, I remember a plugin uh, not working anymore. Uh, because of the controller email that went to Bookworm, because something changed in LDAP uh, within Bookworm. That kind of things happens, and it makes the, pro the project progress because we have to make changes to support those little changes. That's pretty normal. Um, now, for the Inbun agent, that same thing, a few version bumps and two new releases, and the same thing for Windows. We now use an LTSC uh, 2019 instead of the Windows Server Core. And we also have added 
preview images for GDK21. And even for Alpine, all of that started with the user saying, hey, it would be nice to have GDK21 Alpine R images, to which Damien answered, no, I'm sorry, that won't be possible. Uh, Timurin doesn't supply any Alpine ARM64 images. It's complicated. And then I checked on the releases and oh, that's not true anymore. We could do something about that. And the user created a fantastic first PR. We have a new contributor and solving the problem by himself. And then I took on and made the other agent modifications so that we had JDK21 other images. That's a nice collaboration. I'm pretty happy about that. Anyhow, um, nothing major on the controller because it was already ready for JDK21, I think. Uh, we have a few bumps from UB9 and UB8 and, of course, different versions of JDK17 and JDK11. Ooh, it looks like we made it to the end of the agenda. Anything you would like to add? Any feedback? Any question? Nothing from me. Kenneth, um, waiting for your PR. Not that I will be able to review it, of course, but I will be happy to see emerge on the GitHub oh, repo. Anyway. Wait a sec. I take it back. There is something. Oh, and go it's, ahead. It's Mark. visible on the screen here, and it's a reminder on the screen of something that we, we have yet to do. Oh. Uh, notice the baseline for our, our uh, image is dash CentOS 7. Yeah, I was pretty shocked when I saw that. But see, should I it's, say that? It's, no. it's convenient. It's convenient and harmless because all we do is use the JDK that's bundled inside it. But ultimately, we really should um, switch from CentOS 7 to another thing. Right? Yeah. Uh, is it uh, binary compatible with UB8? No. Yeah, it, 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 well, yes. And, and so if they've, if, Temerin provides a UBI 8 uh, container image. We could use that instead. Yes. Uh, um, okay. It's not using Mosul as Alpine does. It's just a LIPC standard classic. Correct. Right? That's so right. I made a proposal a few months ago. Uh, you know, for the time being, we have two from. The first from is for the Eclipse Temerin image. Mm -hmm. And then we have another from that takes one gelling has been run, we integrate the resulting uh, JDK into the final image. And I made the proof of concept, I may say, that was only downloading the binary from Tamarin binaries and then installing it after running gelling. We finally forgot that because it's not necessary. The actual method works pretty well. But maybe in that case, we could. Uh, it, it, it depends, right? If yeah. if I, I like, I, I think Tim Jacome had the right approach to say oh. it is it is good if someone else is building a container image and supporting it. Let's use their work, and and I think that's a very sensible choice that he, he recommended. But a container image based on CentOS seven doesn't align with our support plan. Right. And mm -hmm. and in June of 2024, it won't align with anyone's support <laughs> plan. Yeah. So um, so either now or June of 2024, we've got to get off that thing. And therefore, we need to choose what the new destination is. And if if they already deliver a UBI 8 or a or a some other variant, you know, maybe they deliver a Debian version. Either of those would be fine. They're both based on GLibc. Yep. Uh, okay, I get it. Uh, why not? Okay, so it's for which one is using that uh, this CentOS seven? It's UB something, or I haven't put the link to the actual PR of this thing, so I don't know. I'm sorry. Ask your question again. Uh, sorry. Um, this controller image using uh, JDK CentOS seven is for which target operating system? all the Linux targets or almost all the Linux targets. So Debian, for instance, uses it and, and uh, Alma Linux uses it because oh. all it's doing is delivering the JDK. It's just a convenient way to get the JDK. And, and so we haven't switched oh, from that shoot. convenient way to get the JDK to another convenient way to get the JDK. So we so, could stick with another uh, Temurin, Temurin supplied uh, container image. Right. We oh, just need to, okay. we can switch to another Temurin container image 
and be just as happy right I but think so long as that other image is not a an alpine image we don't certainly don't yeah. want to put a muscle based jdk inside of been uh, there tried that running no. G <laughs> no you don't want that okay um so that's something i could do i guess uh yes it's even simpler i thought there was some uh, hidden implication you know something that i hadn't seen not okay. not that i'm aware of no it's just the the problem is if you choose something cutting edge, more cutting edge, like UBI nine, there's a risk that the JDK you chose may not run on those those older operating systems like Debian ten. Right, and I was going to say something when you brought up Alma. Uh, I would probably recommend against that because I think in the near future they're going to be tracking stream and not enterprise Linux. Well, and and the the fact that we have an alma distro is even in its own a question right why 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 bother it's an open question that we've we still got to confront yes yeah so i guess that the lipsy version that is running in bookworm is not the same as the one running in bullseye uh, for example but the difference may not be major enough to be a problem and the one who would have the problem if there was any problem would be us as we are using gelling to build a JDK. So that would not be the end user who would face some issues, I guess. Right. Mm -hmm. So could I try to do that starting from the sure. bookworm image? Okay. Yeah. Ab well, uh, is, if you look at every place where we reference a dash CentOS 7 in a from clause, we want to replace all of them. And what the replacement should be is is a topic for investigation. I think you'll mm -hmm. have to look at the list of containers provided by Tamarin and see which one is the is the best fit for our needs. Right. Looks like fun, uh, at least for me. <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks a lot for raising this point, Mark. Uh, I wouldn't have thought of that. I was just kind of shocked, but I forgot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Anything else before we wrap it up? One, two, three. I think that's all. No. Thanks a lot for coming, folks. Uh, I think this was really interesting, at least to me. Um, the recording should be available from 24 to 48 hours. And until next time, uh, enjoy Jenkins. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.